I'm sure you've heard by now that the NBA is making some rule changes for the upcoming season. But I don't think you understand how important these rule changes are and how drastically the game is going to change next year. But don't even worry about it. That's what I'm here for. Use me. I'm going to take these rule changes, all three of them, and break them all the way down like a fraction. Don't move a muscle. Let's get right to it. What's happening, YouTube? It's Hush Boy, and YouTube didn't Hush Boy Sports. The NBA's board of directors are having a meeting September the 20th and 21st, and they are expected to pass three rule changes for the upcoming basketball season. They include resetting the shot clock after an offensive rebound to 14 seconds instead of 24, simplifying the clear path foul rule, and expanding the definition of an hostile act, which will guarantee more game stoppage and more referee reviews. The one rule change that probably stood out the most was the shot clock reset. But all three of these rule changes are very important. And after this video, you're going to have a full understanding of these rule changes and you're going to know what to expect in the upcoming season. But I didn't come to yak your ear off. I can show you better than I can tell you. This is Hush Boy, baby. You know I got some receipts. Let's hop into this rule change and bean footage, baby. Let's go. Rule change number one. Shot clock reset after an offensive rebound. In the past, after an offensive rebound, the shot clock would reset to 24 seconds. Therefore, the offense could reset, regroup, and run another play. But no, 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 no. That's over with. From now on, after an offensive rebound, the shot clock will reset to 14 seconds instead of 24 seconds. Therefore, the offense can't take its time to run another play. They got to come on with it. Chop, chop. You can't be out there pity patting with the ball no more. Don't get me wrong. 14 seconds is plenty of time, and the elite teams will still be able to run another play in 14 seconds. This rule will speed the game up and keep the action going. FIBA implemented this rule in 2014, followed by the G League and the WNBA. The NBA even slid this rule change in on us during the summer league this year. Most of the time when someone does get an offensive rebound, they go straight back up with it. But if they do take the ball back up top, they just can't waste time. I like this rule change. I think it's good for the game, and here's why. The NBA believes that this will increase shot attempts in a game, especially at the end of close games. In late game situations, when the defense is down and need a stop, if the offense shoots the ball and miss, get the offensive rebound, they used to could just take it back up top and burn 24 seconds off the shot clock. They can't do that no more. They only have 14 seconds to run another play. This is where you're going to notice the change in late game situations. This is a huge change. And like I said, I like it. Keep the game moving. Rule change number two. Simplifying the clear path foul rule. The clear path rule is a good rule. I like it. Its purpose is to penalize the defense for fouling the offense when they have a clear path to the basket for a score. But this is an old rule. And the NBA players today have finessed that old rule in such a way that they can make a turnover, then immediately foul stopping the opposing team's transition opportunity. I don't like that. And here's the reason why. That stops the game. Now the offense has to take the ball out of bounds and the defense can reset and regroup. Basically, the offense was losing fast break point opportunities and the defense was being rewarded for not hustling back in transition and playing good defense. But no, 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 no. No mas. The NBA will simplify the clear path rule so it adjusts with the times and it focuses on transition. The old clear path foul had to meet these five points right here to be considered a clear path foul. It doesn't even mention transition. The new clear path foul rule will only have to meet three 
and its main focus is transition scoring opportunities. If the defense fouls in transition and these three points are met, it will be a clear path foul. The offense will get two free throws and the ball. Good God. This is a big rule change right here because if you watch basketball, you know how often somebody makes a turnover then immediately fouls and stops all the action. That's when they get loose on the fast break. Steal the ball and then come down and... I'm going to leave a link in the description box below to a video by Mike Korzimba that he made over two years ago. And he said if the NBA doesn't change this clear path rule, that it's going to ruin the NBA. And he was right. I'm telling you about this video because I want you to watch this video so you can fully understand how important this rule change is. Because I'm not giving it any justice. Mike did it some justice. Watch that video and learn something, Grasshopper. And finally, it's time for rule change number three. Expanding the definition of an hostile act. In the past, refs could only review a play that was considered an hostile act if it was an interaction between players. With this rule change, refs can not only review interactions between players, they can also review interactions between players and refs, players and coaches, and players and fans. Now, this rule right here bothers me the most. It scares me a little bit, and here's the reason why. In the past, the hostile act between players usually involved one player physically harming another player. For example, the defender might get crossed up, beat off the dribble. Now he's trying to recover back on defense. Offensive player goes up for the layup. Defensive player goes up for the block. Don't even try to go for the ball and just slap the offensive player across the side of his head. Or the players may be out there just like this. Throwing them hands. Both of those situations would be considered a hostile play. And the refs would stop the game, review the play, and then decide who gets a flagrant one, who gets a flagrant two, who stays in the game, who gets kicked out of the game. You smell what I'm stepping in, don't you? Now, with this new rule change, though, will it only involve physical altercations between the players and the refs, players and coaches, players and the fans, or... Will the refs start kicking out players because they made a gesture toward a fan who'd been heckling them all night? What are the refs going to start stopping the game for now? Will a player get called for a hostile act if they yell and one at a ref because he didn't call a foul? This rule scares me because it's too broad. And the refs can basically pick and choose when to enforce this rule and who to enforce this rule against. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. I'm very curious to see how the refs start enforcing this rule. And I want you to know I'm watching you. I like the first two rule changes, but I don't know about the third one now. I don't know about the third one. So I want you to listen to me, referees. You hear me and you hear me well. Don't try to pull nothing fast with this new little rule that you got. I'm going to be watching you. This contact lens represent you. All right. And my eye represents my eye. Okay. I got my eye on you. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it because I sure did like making it. If you did like it, make sure you hit the like button for your boy, man. Show me some love. While you at it, you might well go and subscribe to me too, man. Because as you can see, I'm working. At the UK, follow me on Instagram. Call me. Call me. Follow me on Twitter too. But in the meantime, in between time. Y'all be cool like y'all be cool, man. This is Hush Boy, and I'm out there thing, man. Y'all.